Good afternoon. I'm Jackie Kikuchi, a third year fellow from Johns Hopkins, and would first like to thank the Scientific Committee for allowing us to present our research on long term outcomes of sacral copalpexy in super cervical hysterectomy, total hysterectomy, and without concomitant hysterectomy. We have no disclosures. Sacred copalpexy can be performed with or without a concomitant hysterectomy. There has been some thought that supracervical hysterectomy may reduce the risk of mesh exposure. Others have advocated that total hysterectomy may improve anterior vaginal wall support. And for post-hysterectomy sacred copalpexy, it is unclear if there are better or worse outcomes compared to sacred copalpexy with a concomitant hysterectomy. The primary objective of our study was to compare the reoperation rates for recurrent prolapse in three cohorts of women, sacred copalpexy with supracervical hysterectomy, with total hysterectomy, and without concomitant hysterectomy with at least two years of follow-up. Our secondary objectives were to compare the overall rates of mesh complications by diagnosis codes, the reoperation rates for mesh complications, and for supracervical hysterectomy, the rate of subsequent cervical procedures. This is a retrospective cohort study utilizing the TrueVen Market Scan database, which contains data from over 350 private health insurance organizations. Of note, this database does not include Medicare patients. We analyzed women undergoing sacred copalpexy between 2010 to 2014, and for outcomes, we restricted the Market Scan data for a 30 day interval after the surgery. This table outlines the number of women within each cohort with at least two years of follow-up. This column here represents the p-value comparing supracervical hysterectomy to total hysterectomy, and this column represents the p-value comparing all three cohorts. The mean age of patients across the cohorts range from 49 to 54 years, and the mean follow-up time was around four years. This table shows the reoperations for recurrent prolapse, and there was no significant difference between the three cohorts with the adjusted hazard ratios shown here. Also, I would like to point out that the reoperation rates are low, ranging from 1.1 to 1.5%. This table shows the overall mesh complications and the reoperations for mesh complications. For sacred copalpexy without hysterectomy, our adjusted analysis found a more than two-fold higher hazard ratio of overall mesh complications compared to supracervical hysterectomy. Interestingly, the reoperations for mesh complications was higher for supracervical hysterectomy compared to total hysterectomy, although the number of reoperations in each group was very small, with five in the supracervical hysterectomy cohort and three in the total hysterectomy cohort. For supracervical hysterectomy, the rate of subsequent cervical procedures was 0.9%. So in conclusion, our study showed that there are no differences between the three cohorts for reoperations for recurrent prolapse. When comparing supracervical hysterectomy to total hysterectomy, there is no difference in overall mesh complications by diagnosis code, but surprisingly, there were higher reoperation rates for mesh complications in the supracervical hysterectomy cohort. Even though this was statistically significant, it's unclear if this is of any clinical significance because the numbers were very small at five versus three reoperations. And compared to supracervical hysterectomy, sacral copalpexy without a hysterectomy had higher rates of mesh complications. And the rate of subsequent cervical procedures in the supracervical hysterectomy cohort was less than 1%. There are several limitations to our study. It is based on de-identified medical records and is susceptible to coding errors. Also, it may not accurately reflect the U.S. population because the database does, is through private health insurance and does not include Medicare patients. There are some notable strengths. It has broad geographic representation and encompasses broad practice patterns by the nature of being a database. There are also a large number of patients with at least two years of follow-up. The results of our study enhances the literature on recurrent prolapse, mesh complications, and cervical complications. 
Also, we can be reassured on performing hysterectomy at the time of sacrocopalpexy. And the rates for recurrent prolapse, mesh complications, and cervical complications were low. Thank you very much.